Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Can I ask you to take your seats? Dear colleagues, this is an important moment. Can I please ask you to take your seats? Okay, thank you. Can I ask the photographers to, to go a little bit to the side, please? Dear laureates of the 2022 Saharov Prize for Freedom of Thought, dear Ambassador Chentsov and Ambassador Tarasiuk, dear Alexandra, Yulia, Ivan, Alexander, Stanislav and Yaroslav representing the brave people of Ukraine, Dear 2022 Sakharov Prize finalists, dear colleagues, it is my privilege to welcome you all to the European Parliament for the 2022 Sakharov Prize Award Ceremony. Since 1988, the Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought has paid tribute to people and organizations that fight in the name of freedom around the world, a fight that is synonymous with the legacy of scientist and Russian dissident Andrei Saharov, of whom this prize bears name to. Andrei Saharov firmly believed in a world of open, free and democratic societies, the same belief that underpins our way of European life. It was under Andrei Saharov himself that once said, a country which does not respect the rights of its own citizens will not respect the rights of its neighbours. This is a message that remains as relevant as ever. That is why in 2020, this European Parliament awarded the Saharov Prize to the Belarusian Democratic Opposition represented by the leader of the Belarusian Democratic Movement, Svetlana Tehanovskaya, and political activist, Veronika Tsapkala. To this day, Belarus holds the appalling record of having the highest number of Saharov Prize laureates in prison. This is also why, in 2021, the European Parliament awarded the Saharov Prize to Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny for his fight against the Kremlin's abuse. And here again, I take the opportunity to call for his immediate and unconditional release. <laughs> our message is that we will not forget them. We will not forget any of our Saharov Prize laureates who are still paying the price for freedom. This year, we meet to honour our 2022 Saharov Prize laureates, the brave people of Ukraine, represented by their president, elected leaders and civil society. Ukrainians who have already fought hard and sacrificed so much for their freedom and our values. And so as an introduction to this award ceremony, I invite you all to watch a short video on the laureates of the Saharov Prize for Freedom of Thought. It is a country of real people, strong and courageous. People who felt their strength and showed the world an example of resilience and perseverance. Thank you. 
In this war with Russia, we are fighting for freedom in every sense. We are paying a high price for it. No one will break us. We are strong. We are Ukrainians. You know, we have a desire for our children to live. Dear friends, dear friends, today marks the 293rd day of war in Ukraine. We have witnessed the inspiring resistance of ordinary citizens making the ultimate sacrifice to delay a column of tanks. Senior citizens standing up to face down Russian troops with nothing but pride as their weapons. Brave women forced to give birth in underground metro stations. To these people, the message from Europe has been clear. We stand with Ukraine. We will not look away. The Ukrainian people are not just fighting a war of independence, but fighting a war of values. The values which underpin our life in the European Union and that we have long had the luxury of taking for granted each and every day. We often speak about democracy, freedom, liberty, as if they were some abstract concepts that do not really translate into much in practice. But the ability to vote for who we believe in, to read independent journalism, to assemble and to say what we want to say, to disagree and dissent, to pursue whatever gives us most happiness in life, to live and love as we choose without consequences, these are what democracy, freedom and liberty mean. And the Ukrainian people deserve to have that too. This is why, this is why I went to Kiev to assure President Zelensky and everyone in the Verhofna Rada that this European Parliament will stand alongside Ukraine in this fight. This is why we send financial, humanitarian and military aid to Ukraine and why we will continue to send more. This is why we adopted eight and soon nine hard-hitting packages of sanctions against Putin and his enablers and continue to amplify your calls to have Russia pay for its war crimes. This is why we granted Ukraine EU candidacy status and defied every cynic who thought our unity would not hold. And dear friends, this is why today we are awarding the European Parliament's most prestigious prize for freedom and human rights to the brave people of Ukraine, represented by their president, elected leaders and civil society, because once again, we mean it when we say that we will stand in Ukraine's corner. And I know that we will have to continue doing more. But let's today award serve as a reminder of our unwavering support and let it be dedicated to all those brave Ukrainian women and men on the ground, to all those who have welcomed with open hearts into our homes and to all those who have lost their beloved family and friends. And I know that the brave people of Ukraine will not give up, and let me assure you that neither will we. Slava Ukraini. It is now my immense honor to give the floor to the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. President Zelensky, you have the floor.
Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you. Esteemed Madam President, dear Roberta, Roberta, dear friends, I greet you on behalf of all our people. It's a great honour. I greet you on behalf of those who are fighting, who work for the sake of Ukraine and for the sake of freedom, for the sake of what it is impossible to imagine all of us, for all of us, life in Europe. It is impossible to imagine it without Ukraine and without freedom, and not only because it would be simply untrue, but also because any attempt to deprive Europe of Ukraine and freedom is always a crime. And we such a crime now. Russia's terrorist war against Ukraine and Europe. It was also in the past when tyrannies tried to conquer Ukrainians and deprive all Europeans of their freedom. But when we win now, Ukrainians and all Europeans, we will win in such a way that there will never be attempts to deprive Europe of Ukraine and freedom. We will win, we will win so that there will be no attempts to apply again the genocidal policy against our people, both in Ukraine and throughout Europe. We must give, and we will give, a new effective security architecture for global freedom and international law and order. I believe this is part of our moral duty. Look at how the Russian army is advancing. The occupiers are burning everything in front of them with artillery and missiles, bombs and drones, mines and ammunition unexploded ammunition that remain in our land. The occupants are destroying cities and villages, all vital infrastructure. It happened in Mariupol. You all saw it. It was the same in Volnovakha, another city completely destroyed after the Russian offensive. More than 20,000 people lived there before this war. Now it is a total ruin. The Russian army is doing the same with Bakhmut, another city in Donbass, where Russian strikes live just broken stones, and more than 70,000 people used to live there until recently, last year. Now it is in ruins. Perhaps only after the end of this war, when we liberate all our land, and we will be able to find all the graves of the victims of Russian terror, we'll be able to say how many lives tyranny has taken this time. Now, we know thousands of names of the victims. Unfortunately, there may be more, many more. I ask you all to observe a minute of silence in memory of all Ukrainian men and women, all adults and children, all military and civilians whose lives were taken by this Russian war, by this deplorable war. Thank you very much. Dear friends, we must act now, not waiting for the war to end, to bring to justice all those who unleashed it and to prevent any repetition of aggression. This will be the most effective protection of freedom 
human rights, the rule of law and other common values, which are embodied in particular by this award of the European Parliament, the Sakharov Prize. I'm grateful to everyone who investigates and helps to investigate the crimes of the occupiers of, Ukra of Ukraine, who is looking for information about Russian murderers and terrorists. I'm grateful to the International Criminal Court, which closely cooperates with Ukrainian prosecutors and has a clear intention to bring justice to the crimes committed by the occupiers on the territory of our state. And I'm grateful to all leaders and states all, politi all politicians and international organisations that work together with us and make every effort to establish the tribunal for the crime of Russian aggression against Ukraine, I call on all of you, your parties and states, to effectively support this work. The tribunal must start working. The European Parliament has already supported this idea. It is necessary to make it a reality as soon as possible, in particular through a, the adoption of a separate European Parliament's resolution in support for the establishment of the Tribunal, through your support and support of the relevant UN General Assembly resolution by your countries. The cities and villages destroyed by Russia, destroyed lives, broken and shot lives, should be reflected in the sentences, not only for those who directly committed all this, but also for those who organised and started this aggression. And when the principle of inevitability inevitability of punishment will work for the crime of aggression against Ukraine, we will be able to make the appropriate institutional basis of justice permanent when any potential aggressor knows that punishment for a criminal war is inevitable. It will be the most effective tool for war prevention. And one more thing. Historical responsibility. Evil always has a motive to return when the history of evil is not fully written. Dear Members of Parliament, I know that tomorrow you will be considering the issue of recognising the Holodomor crime against the Ukrainian people as genocide, and I urge you to support such recognition with the maximum majority of votes to establish justice. Europe must give the strongest possible signal that there will be no gap in the history of tragedies on our continent, in the history of crimes against humanity and humanity committed in our land. I believe that it will be so. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting and celebrating our struggle. Thank you personally for, for marking our struggle. Thank you personally, Roberta, for supporting us. You came to Kiev in a difficult and dangerous time for supporting our reforms. That you so Thank you for supporting our movement to European structures and, a really help, and really helping. Thank you. Glory to our, all our soldiers. Glory to each and everyone who defends freedom in our people. Glory to Ukraine.
Thank you, dear colleagues. We proceed with the vote.